The following program is made possible by the generous sponsorship of Crescent Bank. From the campus of Coastal Carolina University, the Center for Military and Veteran Studies is pleased to present Military Memoirs. Hello and welcome to Military Memoirs, sponsored by Crescent Bank and the Center for Military and Veteran Studies at Coastal Carolina University. We're very pleased to have on our program today Mr. Robert C. Vernon of Marietta, Ohio in Garden City, South Carolina, who uh, is a World War II veteran, the United States Marine Corps, and uh, spent a great deal of his time during the war working with the B-25 bomber. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. The B-25 bomber <coughs> was one of the most famous aircraft used by the American Armed Forces in World War II. It was one of the workhorse bombers used in all theaters of the war by uh, American Armed Forces and uh, emerged from World War II as one of those uh, unforgettable aircraft. And uh, you spent a lot of time making these things fly. Yes, that, uh, that was my uh, position when I was in the Marine Corps. Speaking of the B-25, that was the bomber that bombed uh, Tokyo with General Doolittle. Right, the first, uh, the surprise air flight after. The, yes, the first, uh, the first surprise is a good word. After, yeah. uh, after Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Well, well, let's talk about you a moment before okay. we talk about this, okay. this aircraft <laughs> here. Uh, you were 19 years old when in the United States Marine Corps in World War II. Right. Uh, living in Ohio. Now, why did you decide to do that? Well, I felt uh, that I owed my country uh, myself and whatever I could contribute. At that time I was working at uh, Goodyear Aircraft and we were building B-26 bombers and uh, I felt that I should belong to one of the services and the only one that I ever gave any consideration for was the Marine Corps. I felt that they were the very best trained organization in the world. If you ever wanted to get out of the war you needed to get the training that the Marine Corps offered you so that you had a chance of getting back home later yeah, on. Yeah, safely. Safely, right. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's talk a moment about, uh, about your childhood. Mm -hmm. You uh, grew up in Akron, Ohio, yes. and uh, went, to, went through school there, and uh, you told me that uh, one of the things that you really enjoyed doing was singing. In a choir. Oh yes, I did a lot of singing when I was uh, when I was a teenager. I started studying voice probably when I was 15, and uh, I continued studying until I went in the Marine Corps. And that that study also helped me to get into certain things in the Marines that I probably wouldn't have had the opportunity had I not gone through some study. I graduated so. in June of 1941 and uh, then worked uh, in the aircraft factory building the B-26s and finally was able to talk my dad and mother into saying yes because they had to sign their approval. And by, by December 14th uh, of 1942, then I enlisted in the Marines. And prior to that, you were working in this aircraft factory. Mm -hmm. How did you come to do that? Well, I needed a job after I got out of high school and uh, not very many people would hire any of the able-bodied young men because they would be drafted soon. So I had no job. And my parents knew of a man that was the chief engineer for the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company in the power division, and they asked me to go see him. And I did, I went over to his office and asked him whether he could get me a job. And he called around while I was there, right in his office, and he couldn't get any employment at all. He said, I do have a government schooling, if you'd like to take that. And he told me what the wages were, and they were eight hours a day, and I would be learning something. So I, I accepted that job. And I went uh, through uh, an aluminum training, uh, a six months course in forming aluminum by hand, using a hammer 
or using shrinking machines and things like that. And at the end of that six months time, then they asked me whether I would stay and be an instructor. It, some of that began to come very easy for me. So I did, I stayed for a little while. And then Goodyear Aircraft was opening up what they call Plant C. And that was right next to the large dock where they used to keep the Akron and the Macon, the uh, dirigibles. Mm -hmm. So Plant C was just opening up and they asked me whether I would come over there as a leader in their sheet metal department. And they had three young fellas. We each took eight hour shifts and we were training uh, women. We probably had 125 young girls in our charge. <laughs> uh, each one of us eight hours a day. Well, one of the great stories of World War II is how the civilian population went to work to make the tools of war. Right, yes. And, and you saw this happening firsthand. Yes, I did, yeah. And it, it was a great experience, uh, but at the same time, I, my, the, the tugs of, of, of uh, wanting to be in the military instead of working on the outside, I probably could have had a deferment, but I did not want the deferment. So finally, during uh, the latter part of 42, I was able to get mom and dad to say okay. And uh, so they, they allowed me to enlist, and I did. And I enlisted uh, first in Akron, and then they sent me to Cleveland, Ohio, in order to be sworn in and to get my medical examinations, because you, you couldn't get in if you weren't pretty well fit in the Marine Corps in mm -hmm. those days. Uh, everybody was enlisted. We had no drafted people then. If you had glasses, you couldn't get in the Marine Corps. If you had broken arms or bodies that were, that were deformed in some way, you couldn't get in the Marines. You really had to be in good physical condition. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, did your basic training? I did basic training in uh, San Diego at, at the Marine Boot Camp in San Diego. It was a wonderful experience. And you did more training more after that, more preparation for your job. Yes, then after that, uh, the next base was a base that they call Balboa Park. That's also in San Diego. And uh, that was sort of like a, uh, well, you, you would take your mental examinations and you would begin to fi find out or let, let the Corps know what, what you wanted to do. And uh, I did, I took my exams and uh, they thought that I should go into the metal shop be, mainly because of all of the training that I had had in that government school. And I really credit that probably to the reason that I'm here today. Just the fact that I already had some prior experience and normally you don't get to, you don't get in, in the type of work in, in, in the military that you want. If you're trained to do something, you're probably never going to be yeah. in that particular position. In my case, they did. Mm. They took me from the, or from the training I had and put me in the same operation in the Marine Corps. So it was a big help. You found yourself eventually mm -hmm. in the Pacific, in the United States Marine Corps. Yes. And uh, you uh, were working as uh, the, uh, you became a Master Sergeant. Yes. And you were working as the non-commissioned officer in charge. Right. The NCOIC. Right. At what was called the metal shop. Yes. And you were really making sure that the marine aircraft at your base were able to keep flying. Yes. That was the idea. Uh, our, our, uh, our job was to keep 12 of 15 aircraft flying 24 hours a day. Now, they didn't fly 24 hours. They might have only flown four hours at different intervals. But uh, the squadron wanted 12 to be ready at all times. And what types of aircraft did you uh, work on? Well, we had the B-25 H model, and the H model was the one with the cannon. They had a 20 millimeter cannon on the port side up near the nose. And uh, then later on, then they, they decided that the cannon was a little bit too much for the, uh, for the sheet metal because of the cracks that developed when uh, when, when the 20 millimeter was fired, then they took the cannon out and they put some 50 calibers in the nose and they called that, that was a PBJ, yeah, the, the J model mm -hmm. instead of an H model. But you were familiar with other aircraft the Marine Corps were using in that theater of operations. Yes, they, we had some Corsairs, we had some F4Fs, which was a straight wing uh, 